Okay, so the last thing to consider then is animal models uh, that you would do after you've done some in vitro validation, lab-based validation, uh, that would bridge you towards you know further translation of your technology, like maybe a human being. Um, so uh, I want to split that you're thinking on that into two parts. One is uh, there might be an appropriate uh, animal model that you would just use in the lab. So. For this, I'm thinking like, you know, small animal model, probably a mouse or a rat, um, kind of accessible to uh, researchers and would give you some early information about whether your material is, is, is fit for purpose. So that could be some of the, uh, the subcutaneous models that I've shown you, the, like the mouse back models I've shown you, if it's a, a soft tissue application uh, or it might be like a bone defect one for um, if you're looking at a bone implant. Uh, but for uh, vascular grafting, uh, our lab uses a mouse carotid grafting model. So uh, the tiny little artery in, in the neck of the mouse. Uh, so the length of the graft that we look at is really tiny. So uh, six millimeters uh, in length and half a millimeter in diameter. So really, really small. In fact, so small that you can't really sew them in place. Um, so we have to use these, cut, these plastic cuffs and we have to do um, kind of they have to be tied on. Uh, so that surgery is incredibly challenging. Um, but if you have highly trained operators, it, it's okay. Uh, and we use it as a kind of a, a low cost screening methodology to, to put early graphs in to get a sense of where they're gonna do what we think they are or what the, the lab based results showed us they would do. So uh, the thing about it is it's the second important thing to do is, okay, fine, I've identified a lab model, but what are its pros and cons? And so uh, for this particular case, the flow rate through those graphs is really, really high. So you don't usually get a blood clot. So that kind of takes clotting out of it. And then uh, I guess the way we've structured it, they do endothelialize kind of within two weeks and they will get some neointimum hyperplasia by about a month. Uh, and so the time frames are okay and kind of two out of the three things that we're interested in we can measure. Um, but then I guess the, the physiology is really different to uh, humans, certainly that's gotta be considered. Uh, and we don't do any long, we don't use the mouse for long-term assessment. So like will my graph break down and, and degrade over time? It's not measured by the model. So um, the framing then for your, for your, your own project is, uh, you know, what's a lab-based model that, uh, or a lab accessible animal model that could give you some information about your, your material and what are the pros and cons? And then another element of this might be, um, well then after that, what's the established pathway to get it to clinic? So. Uh, usually for these devices, there's industry have mandated that there's a, a pathway. Uh, and so for grafting, uh, the established pathway is to do a, a rat aortic replacement, uh, a rat carotid replacement, and then finally a sheep carotid replacement. And you can see that those animals are getting progressively larger and you can maybe infer that their vascular system is getting more and more like a human. And the results we get from them uh, are more able to be extrapolated to what would happen in a human. Uh, but then also you could infer that the, the entry to, into these models or how accessible they are to researchers gets more and more difficult because the surgery starts to resemble uh, human surgery. So to, you know, to take a 60 kilo sheep and, you know, uh, give it anesthesia and do um, carotid replacement surgery uh, very much needs uh, infrastructure and skills that resemble human surgery so not accessible and also significantly more costly so uh, a full rat study might cost in the order of you know five six thousand uh, dollars but then you know a single sheep might cost fifteen or twenty thousand dollars so um, the cost and the scale uh, make it so you can't kind of do these routinely uh, on every single material you use so you, I guess what I want you to do and what you want you to think about is to think of this as a pathway. So using small animal models to do screening and to select the best candidates uh, and then building uh, your way towards uh, humans in the kind of most practical and cost effective way and trying to imagine that, you know, you're doing research in this space. Uh, and the last thing to note about these models is uh, as a guideline, there's not really usually one animal model that is completely representative of all the things we want to know. And in this case, uh, the rat and the rabbit and the sheep model are very much complementary because they don't measure everything by themselves. So for example, the rat aorta model, again, doesn't measure blood clotting because the flows are too high. And then it's kind of really intensive in scope. You need to do a head to head study like the one we've published. Uh, we needed 60 rats uh, for um, 
kind of up to 18 months. Our study was six months. So a lot of resources, um, like not a lot of cost resources, but a lot of time resources. And then we're not measuring one of the elements. If you look at the rabbit model, uh, it only measures thrombogenicity actually well and the other two not so well. <clears throat> and so maybe you'd want to do the rat and the rabbit kind of together to get a full sense of your material. And then finally, maybe the sheep is the best model, most physiologically relevant, but as I've touched on, we're like really expensive and a high bar to entry. Um, so yeah, they're the considerations. And so for, for grafting, um, the way we have developed them and the way we do development is, is through this pathway. So, you know, mouth first and screen your candidates and then, you know, rats is the next one, rabbit for anything that's, um, really promising. And then kind of only for the best, best candidates and, only if you have the resources then into the sheep.